Hello, hello, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yes, okay. but I'm driving. All right. Good to see you. Good to have you. Hello, so finally. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Mr. Olu. Olu Shola. Yes, sir. Thank you. Welcome to class. All right, guys. Uh, by the way, you just need to see my face to confirm yeah. that. Me, right? So that mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where are me? I am looking for me. How do I show my face? So that I your daily I did see is not a lot. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay. So 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 so. All right. There you go. Uh, kind of dark, right? All right. Welcome to class. We have all kinds of. Uh, Participants here, people for CD, M, CMD, Nico Data Manager, CDM. <laughs> for people for cloud, even existing trainees that are not sure where they are going from here, we're all here together, fine. So by the end of today's class, we should sort ourselves and then we'll know where exactly we belong. So today we are basically going to do introduction give you an insight into what's ahead of us and then uh, a blueprint as to how we intend to cover everything that I've got for you and ultimately land you that dream job. All right? Yes, so sir. nothing too technical today, just <coughs> essentially introduction, introductory concepts. All right. So, where do we start from? All right, so I'm going to give you plenty of room to ask questions. 
But for now, let me just do, like I said, an overview of what this concept is about. All right, so what are you saying, by the way? The whiteboard? No, I'm seeing your face. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, Okay, I so see both. Go. I see your face and, and I do see the whiteboard. Well, welcome to class message. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You should be paying for seeing my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth paying for it, sir. <laughs> because you the, the item uh, platform you created has, uh, has added value to me as a person and mm -hmm. it's it does a, a pathway to another level, you know. Mm -hmm. If you have not created the item, maybe you would not have been here today, and uh, some of us will be maybe struggling to find a way out of uh, cloud, Linux, Windows Server, and the uh, DevOps. But thank God for at least for creating the platform to launch us to another realm of IT. So uh, I personally I appreciate, I appreciate you for that. Thank you, Mr. Alishema. I appreciate that. All right, so, all right, so, 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 so. Now, we are all here because we want to go into IT, right? And then of course, the core of what we say IT, the real IT is cloud. IT is not complete these days without cloud, irrespective of what you know. If you are not able to take that into cloud and implement, then it is no longer IT, all right? However, uh, there are so many things you can do in cloud, so many different areas of specialization, even within cloud, all right? So I just wanted to first of all, give you this whole picture of what IT is and then that should help you see yourself, irrespective of what you are doing here, see yourself fitting in the big picture so that you know what role, what position you are occupying and what role you'll be playing in this big picture. All right, so that's what I try to do, first of all, before I now give you a chance to ask your questions before we go into the course proper. All right, so where's my... Let me think of, uh... Okay, so, 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 so. All right, so do you see my Microsoft Word document? No. Okay. <coughs> mm. Okay, so the reason we're in IT, the reason IT is such a big deal these days is because the world in this era called uh, Industry 4, you know, that was the, we had the first, the first uh, industrial revolution, second, fourth, and then third, and then the fourth. So basically everything now is moving into virtual. So shops are converting from brick and mortar that is physical to virtual. And literally every job in what you call the gig economy is converting from the physical to the virtual, the virtual uh, aspect of it. So this is creating opportunities in terms of people who would set up the virtual environment, people who will run the application in the virtual environment, of course. By virtual environment, we are basically talking about some server in cloud running applications, giving bets to all of the applications you know these days, whether it's Uber, an application, or whether it's Grubhub, uh, Fiverr, and all of the opportunities that are coming up and creating the 
employment opportunities available out there. So because the world is changing from a physical world to a virtual world, from people going to offices in physical building to people just logging onto some app and doing their jobs online, even remotely from their bedroom. There is plenty of room, plenty of opportunities in IT. So the reason we are doing IT and I get the reason you are coming in is to see how you can explore some of these opportunities, essentially as an employee to people who have these ideas. And sometimes you also have your own ideas that you want to implement the same way without necessarily working for anybody, all right? So when you talk about IT from this perspective, then there are so many areas. From networking, which is essentially about how you can connect one computer to another computer, one device, one mobile phone to another mobile phone so that they all communicate with one another to the concept of virtualization. Virtualization means that even the servers and the cables and the network infrastructure that you normally go to your office to use, they are no longer in physical form. They are now in virtual forms. They are now like buttons that you can click right on your system and have access, right? So these are different parts, aspects of information technology of IT. All right. Then we also have the aspect of IT that's about. Uh, I'm letting people in. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we have the part that is about software development, we have database management. We have support, we have security, and so on and so forth. Now, for people coming into cloud, for our cloud trainees, people trying to become DevOps engineers, we are going to take that and look at that in detail. And then there are also people here, if you, a few of you here, who want to become clinical uh, data managers. We're also going to look at this in detail. But I don't know if I've, the picture I'm trying to paint now is that IT is really big, it's wider than just cloud, even though cloud is the main thing, and clinical data management and virtualization and software development and networking. There are so many aspects of IT. However, like I said earlier on, if you know all of this outside of cloud, it is no longer useful, not in the 20th century. I mean, not not after 2017 thereabout. So irrespective of what you knew, what someone like me knew before cloud, because I had been in IT even before cloud, it is useless. If I'm not able to take that technology, that skill into cloud to deploy. For the simple reason that everything now is going virtual and it is cloud that makes this virtualization possible. So if you are not able to help organizations tap into the benefits of being virtual, then what is your IT skill about, All right? So this is why anytime we mention IT, the first thing, the first environment that comes to mind is cloud. And then once you have cloud, you cannot make up your mind, what do you want to do in cloud? All right, so for our own case, we have course, I mean, specifically for my case, there is a course called uh, data analytics. What does that do? What does data analytics do? Let me see if I can uh, put that in diagram form. Data analytics. Okay, you can see my whiteboard, right? So anytime there is can you see my whiteboard? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we can see. Okay. 
So there is something called big data. So big data means basically for a full, uh, an application like Facebook, for example, and so many other similar applications, everything that you do while on that site, the sites that you browse, the phrases that you Google, that you search for, the pages that you, you visit, all of this data, they are not thrown away. All of them, one way or the other, find themselves in a database of that has everything that everybody does while on that page. So this information, this data of what you do, where you visit, and so on and so forth, forms what you call big data. Big data. All right. So this is why true machine learning and true artificial intelligence, Facebook is able to, for example, predict that you are interested in a particular topic or in, on a particular subject, and then would uh, market that same subject to you that you visited only a couple of hours ago. So the role of data analytics here is to be able to come back to this big data and use this big data, information from this big data to make decisions about what is our product? What are people interested in? What other course should I form, for example, if it was about training, all right? So the people who search who fetch data from this big warehouse. So big data essentially means a warehouse of so much information. So the people who will go in there and extract this information through some code-like language called SQL, SQL and then use that information to deduce what is beneficial, for example, to this company in terms of, can you go to that data and extract information and analyze that information so that Walmart as a company, for example, would know what products customers are actually buying and what products are giving us the most profit so that we can focus on that product. So data analytics people are the people who are able to, who are given access to this big data and by some codes called SQL, because it's a heap of data. So you need to have some means of filtering this data and getting what you want. So through SQL, they are now able to extract that information and then they will now use uh, a program like Excel to analyze the extracted info from the big data and then go ahead to use maybe a program like Power BI to present this information, even though they are, they are data, present them in graphical form that will make sense to the ordinary person. Not everybody's computer is uh, analytics driven. So if you hear and this and uh, product managers giving presentation and showing graphs about okay this was this is how far we have come based on uh, our business experience in the last 10 years this is the prediction this is how we are going in the next one year we expect to do this all of that is based on data drawn by data analytics people analyzed and then presented in graphical form using Power BI. So do you get the place of data analytics now? So data analytics will simply be people who access company data to draw, I mean, depend, depending on uh, the department you are working for, you can draw literally every kind of data. You can draw data for the financial department. 
to predict things that have to do with uh, money, what should we buy, uh, where should we invest in, what, we should, what should we not do or do. You could work for virtually any department. It will just be a matter of extracting from the data warehouse the kind of data that is relevant to that department and then analyzing it to get the kind of prediction that department is looking for. All right? So for this one, you need tools. IT is always about tools. IT is actually like it's engineering, but just like you use tools, engineering tools in the real world, in the physical world, in IT, we also use tools to do our IT engineering. But those tools are programs, they are services. So when we talked about uh, SQL, we we'll talk about Power BI and all of these other tools we've been talking about. They are all tools available in virtual forms because we are talking about virtual environment now. You don't talk about physical environment. So we're also talking about tools in virtual forms. So these are the tools that you need to be able to do your work as a data analyst. So as a data analysis person, you must know SQL. You must know how to use Excel beyond just doing simple calculations. Which means there's something called what if analysis, your pivot, your, your dashboard and so on and so forth. And then of course, Excel is the core thing actually. But in order to make this, the conclusion of your analysis visible in ways that will make sense to people that are not necessarily IT inclined, for example, you're the owner of the business and uh, the directors and even the ordinary man on the, on the street that does not know the IT implications of your data. All they just want to see is, if I put five naira there, what do I get in, in three years time? That's all they want to know, not about the details. Then you need to be able to present that kind of scenario in graphical forms. You know what I mean by graphical forms? Like pie chart or, or bar chart or something graphic just to say, okay, this is the trend. If you put money here today, this is what you are likely to get in three years time or in five years time. That kind of presentation in graphical format, you need another kind of tool. Generally, again, when we talk about tool, usually there is not one tool only. But it's just that we adapt one tool. I mean, one one of the many tools become popular, more popular than the other. So we find ourselves talking about one tool, even though there are many tools. But in this case, Power BI will be the appropriate tool for you. Right? So do you get the place of uh, data analytics now and the tools that you need to be able to use before you can see yes? I can do data analytics. So data analytics <clears throat> is, uh, again, when I say, when we say IT, the, the real IT, the core IT is cloud. So data analytics is not like, yes, it is IT, but it's, it's, uh, it's not like the it's not like top there. It's uh, okay. For example, in the US, data analytics job will be like fifty thousand, seventy thousand per annum kind of job, compared to cloud automation, where you can be talking about not just talking about one fifty, one sixty thousand, but per annum, but the opportunities that are available around that one sixty, one seventy thousand can even double that figure so that ultimately you could be doing 300,000 and so on and so forth. So there is possibility as a cloud engineer to earn 250 and above, but definitely not with, uh, not with uh, data analytics. So I want to conclude by saying data analytics will be for people who are not really so IT inclined, but just want to come into it, all right? So that's about data analytics. Then the other aspect, another kind of training we do is uh, 
clinical data management. What is clinical data management? Clinical data management is when for every drug, every medicine that you see out there that you go to buy that solves one form of ailment or the other, the manufacturers of that medicine, of that drug, did not just manufacture it and pump it into the market, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. The procedure for releasing medicine to the market and for getting humans to come by and use your medicine is that so there is this process called from the point when you first of all manufactured the the drug in its crude form between that point and the point when you eventually release this drug to the market it has to go through what we call trial. And this trial would pass through different phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, and then phase four. At every stage during this trial, from this point to this point, from that point to this point, data is gathered about who and who is taking this drug. When they take the drug, did the drug solve the problem? Did it resolve the issue that it was meant to solve? For example, the person who was suffering from cancer, did, did he get healed? All right, all right. So this is what happens from this phase to that phase to that phase until at some point here, you the at some point you would have gathered enough data from this stage at this uh, just bef before the fourth stage for you to say yes, I have enough data now to present to the people in charge of drug administration in the, in, in the US, they are called FDA, all right? To approve this drug and say, yes, having passed through all of these stages of the drug research and clinical trial, we have found this drug to be okay. We have found this drug to be effective, to be efficient in whatever they claim to do. Therefore, it has passed and we are now releasing it to the market. There are so many people and so many stakeholders around this research from stage one to stage three. But the place of the clinical data manager is this. Now, there is a server in cloud, all right? So that when this drug is being tested in India, in Nigeria, in Afghanistan, in USA, at the different sites, these are actually hospitals, at the different hospitals where they are being monitored, all of the data concerning this research is being entered into a central database. So this is where this central database, which is available in cloud, set up by a cloud engineer, this is where the clinical data manager works. And what does he do here? He ensures that all the data entered from these different locations and from these different sites by the different stakeholders. He ensures that all of the data are valid and clean and meets the objective, the, it's called protocol, meets the protocol requirement for that particular drug and the process such that by the time all of this is now being released to FDA for final approval, FDA will find it okay and not have reason to say because this data is not consistent, because we should have entered 34 over 60.
but you mistakenly enter 60 over 34. Therefore, and this costs a lot of money. We're talking about at least $1 billion usually for drug to pass from this stage to this stage. So the big pharma, the Pfizer, the pharmaceutical companies that own these drugs, they don't want to take chance. So they want to make sure that the data is clean and valid and meet all the requirements prior to submission to FDA. So the place of the CDM, the clinical data manager, is to work on this data as they are being entered from all over the world to ensure that the data meet predefined specifications. For example, if a site mistakenly entered the temperature of a patient during one of the vis visits, I mean, the patient will be somebody taking this drug now during the trial period as a hundred degrees centigrade. It is, that is not valid, all right? Ideally, oh, okay, let, let's go a bit on the extreme. If he enters as a, 150 degrees centigrade, all right? That is not valid. So it is up to the clinical data manage, manager to detect and then correct. Not necessarily, when I say correct, not necessarily by altering it, but by making contact with the appropriate uh, stakeholders that, like the CRA, like the PI, like the CRC, and all of these people working, all of these other professionals working as part of this research to say you, you say they raise the query about that particular entry so that that issue is corrected and the appropriate figure is entered so that is data cleaning so you want to make sure that everything entered here in that database meet the protocol specification nothing is uh, from the blues, nothing, that data must be 100%. Because it's about drugs, it's about humans, it's about, it's so important. So everything about that drug and reactions of humans to it must be captured accurately. And data is the only way for these people and any other person for that matter to know that this thing was accurately captured, and then they can take their decision as to, yes, we can go ahead with this, or no, it's not good enough. Because not every drug that passes through these stage, stages ultimately stay true to going to the market. No, 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 not every drug, all right? <clears throat> so this is where the data, man, uh, clinical data manager works. And that, that is why their work is remote because this server is in cloud. So you don't need to go to, I mean, there are so many over, depending on the kind of drug, there might be over 500 sites available all across the world testing that particular drug. So the data management does not visit site to site or he stays and works remotely from home or from wherever on this server, cleaning, validating, the data that is entered into this server from the numerous uh, sites and locations where patients have been uh, where patients are being tested, yeah? where the drugs are being test tested on patients. All right, so do you get the, the place of clinical research Manager? Yes. So, so everything we'll be learning in clinical data management would be from, from this very point when the drug was first manufactured to the point where it was taken to the site or where the site was contracted, where the CRO was contracted. What are the stages? I mean, what and what do you need to do to put in place? before you even allow the first patient to come in 
or the dr drug trial? What and what do you need to put in place as part of the preparation that, oh, Pfizer just contracted me for this new drug that they are about to release is uh, HIV, uh, I mean, uh, is COVID related drug and then, uh, all right? So having just be contracted, what and what do you need to put in place in order to prepare the sites and the patients? And once that phase is done and you sign in the first patient for the drug trial, that next stage, which is now the phase two, what and what, what are the procedures? What are the defined steps? Because there are bodies in charge that have defined the best practices for each of these stages, all right? So under the clinical data management, you are going to learn at the different stages, what and what you should do as part of the research. And ultimately, by the time you finish at stage three and you are done with your work, how do you round up all of this data that you have been managing here that you'll be cleaning and validating and say, I am done with the work. This is the final work. Everything is clean. It is valid. You cannot go ahead. You, you hand that over to a different department. It's called the uh, statistician department. So you hand that over to the statistician and say, I am done with my work. It is the statistician that will not for that work on it before it is now presented to the FDA. All right. So, irrespective of what stage, at what stage were you invited to come and join this research, whether at the very preliminary stage or midway or even towards the end, there are processes defined that you must follow in order to be able to carry out this. Uh, your role, your responsibility in the best practiced ways that have been defined by the bodies. All right, like I have, I've always said during the advert, in clinical data management, there is no certification to write, at least not yet. Of course, I expect that as that industry continues to boom, because this is only, this, this came about only like, 2018, 2017, 2018. So it's still a relatively new field, very, very new. So there are no certifications to write yet, but there are plenty of opportunities out there. All right. So once you know that, then uh, it is very likely, it is very, very likely that even before the end of your three months, uh, training as clinical data manager, you begin to get interviews. No certifications to write, just know what your rules are, understand your duties, understand what and what you must do at every level to meet the requirements at that level, and then you are good to go. Then ultimately, we would also learn as, an, as the IT tool for doing your work, we'll learn Excel, we we'll learn Excel, and then we we'll learn one of the many uh, hospital management tools that people on site here use to enter their data to this database. Right? So we we'll learn one of the hospital management software used there, and then we we'll learn Excel. Because when we talk about data and analyzing data and cleaning data. Is always, almost always Excel, basically. Microsoft Excel, right? Right? So we'll learn Excel and then we'll get to know. Excel is about the most technical thing we'll learn. The others is just to, to see how other people do their work. But more than Excel, we are going to spend at least 70% of the time understanding what clinical research is different um, stages of clinical research and what are what these stages in uh, what and what <clears throat> is involved during these stages and then what your role is as the clinical data manager and what your role is here 
and so on and so forth. All right. So put down your question if you have questions to ask around clinical data man management. <coughs> and then after that, we have the cloud. Cloud automation, actually, that's, that's the free uh, cloud automation. So under cloud automation, what are you going to learn? Under cloud automation, we are going to learn Under cloud automation, we are going to learn about four subjects for different courses. So you will learn one, Linux, and then you will learn cloud. And when we say cloud, there are many clouds, we'll learn AWS, and then we'll learn DevOps, and then we'll learn uh, Terraform, and then we'll learn uh, Kubernetes. All right, so what do we mean by this? So Linux is an operating system, just like your Windows. Linux is operating system just like your Windows, just like Windows is operating system. But for servers, we don't use Windows because Windows is not, or basically Linux is more reliable than Windows when it comes to servers, all right? So we're going to learn Windows because when you go to cloud, the things that you are setting up in cloud, they are servers. The machines that you are setting up is cloud, they are servers, they are not, uh, you already have your own clients that you are using from home. So they are not client, you don't go to Windows to set up client, you don't go to cloud to set up client, you go to cloud to set up servers. So anywhere, and whenever you hear server, the operating system running inside that server by default is Linux, all right? Especially in cloud. Maybe if you talk about server within a corporate organization of 20, 30, 300 computers, yeah, you could talk about Windows server. When it comes to servers running in cloud, serving, and you know that things, applications running in cloud usually are seven millions of people, right? We are not talking about 30, 20, 50 people. We are talking about application like Zoom, for example. I'm sure Zoom has over 1 billion subscribers. Maybe not subscribers directly, but people using Zoom one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about billions of people. So servers like that will definitely use Linux. So you cannot claim that you know about servers if you do not know how to use Linux as an operating system or as a language to tell servers what to do, all right? So for you to see that you know servers, you must know Linux, because Linux is the way to tell servers, delete this file, move this file from this place to this place, to this place, command this hard disk. Linux is the way. Linux is, that's what servers these days use. So it's very important for you to understand and know how to use Linux to carry out server-based functions. Right? But servers can be anywhere. Server that is outside of cloud is not complete. Now you want to take your understanding of Linux there to cloud, so that when you set up servers in cloud, you are able to use this, your Linux operating system to run those servers. Because like I have said many times, Knowing Linux by itself without deploying it in cloud is not complete because the world has gone beyond somebody setting up server and asking you to come to their house to run the server. They want to put it in cloud and make that service available to billions of people. All right. So application these days is built for millions of people. We can even be modest as in millions. And then they are scalable so that even if you already not, uh, originally built it for millions of people, it can scale 
to accommodate billions of people. That's one of the many advantages of being in cloud, right? So once you know Linux, you want to go into cloud and spin up servers in cloud and use that Linux that you already knew to run servers in cloud, All right? So that way you cannot say, yes, I'm now a Linux person in cloud, All right? So cloud basically is, the cloud means that instead of you buying infrastructure and owning infrastructure, by infrastructure, I mean like your computers, your routers, your switches, your cables, and all of these things you normally build by yourself to say, I own a hosting company. You don't need any of those anymore. Just connect to cloud and spin up these things in cloud remotely from your laptop. So your data center is no longer physical. It's now in virtual form, in cloud. And with your understanding and uh, control of Linux, you are now able to do all of this, even in your data center in cloud, all right? So that is why you would need to learn Linux first before you now go into cloud to be able to, if you know Linux, if you go into cloud and you're able to spin up your servers, and run your environment without Linux, it's okay. But what are you going to do after you have speed up your servers? Okay, you need to employ somebody else to come and run, manage the servers for you. Because without Linux, you cannot manage them. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at those two. And then we'll now teach you DevOps. What is DevOps? DevOps is basically the idea of automating the deployment of your infrastructure and also your applications. What do I mean by that? The infrastructure are the physical components that you need to put in place before you can deploy your software, your applications. Application, for example, Uber as an application. Uber as an application. So Uber is the software, the application that you see on your mobile phone, right? But it, it needs servers. It requires, in fact, not just one server, many servers to run on. So the servers that you need before you can now deploy that application Uber into that environment and say, run for me. That server is part of your infrastructure, all right? And then the application developed to run on that infrastructure is the application. Now, DevOps means that you are now able to deploy your application and even your infrastructure by automatically. What I mean is just in cloud, you needed to go into your AWS, for example, to manually use your mouse to click stuff and move things, okay, like we are doing here, in order to set up your infrastructure. But no employer would wait for you to do that these days. What employers are looking for now is somebody who can run these codes and save the code for future use so that next time they call, if I indicate, I need you to spin up 50 servers. We just got a contract from uh, T-Mobile. We need to spin up 50 servers so that we can connect to their big data and help them analyze their customer behavior in the past seven years, all right? So that kind of contract requires you to go to cloud, spin up all the servers that you need, and then connect to their database, analyze everything they need you to analyze. And in maybe three months, six months, you are done with the analysis of over 400 million customers. And then you present your report to them, all right? So in that case, you are not going to be setting up your infrastructure manually setting up 50 servers manually and then no 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 so you, you write codes so that when you run these codes it will just run things it will run the infrastructure and it will run the application without you manually doing stuff that concept of you running codes and making this happen from the running of the code is what we call devops Yeah. 
I'm not sure that that makes sense. Anyway, I'll give you time to ask questions, and then if you give, if it does not make sense now, ask me again, and then I'll look for simpler ways to explain. And then the Terraform part of that uh, of the DevOps, Terraform and Kubernetes are part of DevOps. To be honest, the Terraform part of the DevOps is the part of the DevOps that set up your infrastructure. This one will set up your infrastructure. So Terraform will not set up your application. It will set up your infrastructure. So you want to set up your server, set up your secure environment, set up your access list and everything that has to do with building a network. Terraform would help you do that, all right? But when it comes to deploying applications into that infrastructure that Terraform has set up for you, then you need to use another tool. So Terraform is just like a tool. You need to use another tool that there are several other tools, but the most common tool and the one we'll be using is Ansible. Ansible will be the tool that you use to automate the deployment of your application into that infrastructure that you build with Terraform. So essentially, what we'll be training you for as cloud automation engineers and what you are taking to interview, what the interviewer expects you to know, what your recruiter expects you to know to hire you is <clears throat> that you can automate. It's not enough to know cloud and expect that. No, no, no. Just knowing cloud is not enough to give you a job you must be able to automate the deployment of infrastructure in cloud. And then also, you must be able to automate the deployment of your applications in your infrastructure. That is what gives you the job. So that is where we are going. Our learning of Linux, our learning of uh, uh, cloud and DevOps, is ultimately to get you to that point where you can confidently say, I have deployed, uh, I have automated the deployment of infrastructure using, there are many tools you can use. Terraform is just one of them. You can use Python, you can use uh, 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 Node.js, you could use uh, uh, Amazon, yeah, a number of tools, I can't remember them all. But Terraform is the one we are using. So your employer wants to hear that you can automate the deployment of infrastructure using Terraform, and then you can automate the deployment of uh, applications in that infrastructure using any of the many tools available. Uh, you could have Chat, you could have uh, Poppy. Again, you could actually have Python there, but again, the one we'll be learning is Ansible. All right, and then there is something called CI/CD, which is also the another meaning of uh, DevOps. And then having set up your infrastructure and your application, you also want to be able to automate the process of every change that developers, people who write programs, make to the source code should automatically affect the live the production uh, version of that application. In other words, if Uber as, a, as an application has 300 programmers, you want to configure as a divorce person, the whole process so that any change made by any of those 300 programmers depending on how the company wants it, would automatically reflect. Once he pushes that change to your repository, it will automatically trigger a series of actions that would ultimately reflect that change in the production area. Your Uber application was, will see it without anybody manually doing anything. So that concept is called continuous integration and continuous delivery, CICD. So at the end of this training, there is only one statement that you should be able to defend. 
that you are taking to interview that is giving you the 140k per annum minimum kind of job. That statement is, I am able to build infrastructure with Terraform code. I'm able to deploy applications to those infrastructure with Ansible, and I'm able to set up my CI CD for that process with my Jenkins. Once you can make that statement and you can defend that statement, because we are going to run a series of projects that will help you defend, not just defend that statement, but you also have the project to take to the interview with you because everything you do in class will form part of your project that you are taking to interview. Because they're going to show you, okay, show me what you have done in that regard. You have something to show them. How would you write a code that would deploy all of this in, uh, in Google Cloud, for example? If, if I wanted to change my cloud provider from AWS to Google, now you tell them, okay, this is my code. I'll just remove AWS and put Google there. How would you so just ask you questions around what you have done? And that is it. That is it. Right? So all of the four months of training will be preparing you to defend that simple state. All right. And then Kubernetes is the father of all of this is the king. At this level, you are a big guy in IT. This is the father of all automation. Whereas in DevOps, we are talking, we are talking about uh, you use one tool to set up your infrastructure, and then you use another tool to deploy your, your application to that infrastructure. In Kubernetes, only Kubernetes will set up the infrastructure, will set up the cloud, will set up the application, and do everything for you. Just run it and you just watch Kubernetes perform magic. And then you'll be wondering, this is, this is so wow, this is the king, this is the king. At this level, you are no longer a small boy, all right? So, but this is enough to give you your 140K job. But if you now know this in addition to this one, it will be extra. If you know Kubernetes in addition to what you learn in Terraform, what you will learn in Terraform and Ansible, then you can decide, you know what, I'm not even working for anybody anymore. I'm going to go and set up my own. All right? So that all of that was just my attempt to give you an overview of uh, the courses we have lined up for you. And then also what, uh, you expect to learn under each of them. All right. So at this stage, I'm going to let you ask questions and then we can throw more light on, not just on what, uh, on the overview of the courses that we have lined up, but also on any aspect of IT, any area of ambiguity, I'm willing to, I'm here, I'm ready to clarify them so that uh, we can put you on good standing in preparation for the real class. All right, thank you so much. That's it for now. I'll, let you, I'll take your questions. Hello, good evening, sir. I have a question. Uh, I'd like to see you if you are answering questions. Ideally, I should, I should know all of my students, but if you are not, uh, Well, if you're asking a question, I'd like to see your video, if you don't mind. Yeah, Send just give me, me one second. To that All right. So whoever is asking a question, please show your video. All right. <clears throat> yeah, can you see me? Uh, yes, I can see you now, White. Oh, yeah. White, yes. I remember White. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is, um, is there any way we could uh, get reference of people who have been through this training and uh, they have a job already? Yes, of course. If you've been to the website, you see at least three references. But there are so many, I don't, I mean, I don't want to congest the place with it. Okay. The there are so many, yeah. Okay. I count at least seven off my head right now. But on oh. the website, there are at least three. 
Okay. Thank you. And those three are the most recent. And oh, at, okay. at that time, at the time of those three, we're not even teaching Kubernetes. We're not teaching Terraform. We're stopping at, we stopped at DevOps. But now, and then my promise to them at that time was, you might not be able to get a six-figure job. Yeah. Because we stopped at DevOps. But uh, we have improved on that curriculum now. Yeah, but even though I did not promise them six-figure job, they all got six-figure jobs, which is wow. So they must have done some good work on there, some good work extra. But yeah. now that we are not including Terraform as part of your training, it's even more guaranteed than, than, uh, than it used to be. That uh, with that Terraform and with that statement, yes. You... It brings me to my next question. Uh, <clears throat> so when, how, how do you assist your trainees to get a job? <coughs> Is it just by assisting them in building a resume or sending out applications or, I mean, I just want to get an overview of how that works. Uh, the, the, the real thing is to prepare them well, give them quality training so they are able to pass interviews as a primary thing. And then what, once that is done, once we have met that uh, primary criteria, then we'll go ahead to, to support them with resume. I okay. mean, like I said, we have uh, over at least seven people who got job recently, last half of uh, last year. So however they got the job, whatever resume you give them, those opportunities will still have access to this kind of thing. Okay. Thank you, sir. No welcome. All right. Yes. Questions. Questions. <clears throat> sir, um, I quickly want to ask you this question. I don't know. Yeah, you were talking about um the cloud. And you were talking about, you know, deploying server through cloud, <clears throat> that there's no nobody using the other um, um, kind of way. So I wanted to know if um, um, using a physical server mm. is useless, like in deploying server or, or doing other stuff on, on Linux. Since you were talking about, you know, we can we can we can do so many things in cloud now through the AWS and some other web servers. So I just want to know if truly the physical server is useless in the in the IT whatever. Yeah, once you know the benefits of being in cloud, you can you might be able to draw that kind of conclusion for yourself because uh, I mean, the benefits are so, they are overwhelming, you will not think of physical server. Unless of course, in cases where the regulations of your industry really, uh, the regulation, for example, as a bank does not allow you to do cloud 100%. And even the cloud that you do is so regulated that uh, you cannot even do cloud the regular way. You have to have dedicated, dedicated servers in cloud and not share for security concerns, not share cloud resources with other people. So unless in cases like that where regulations does not allow you, the benefits of having these things in cloud so overwhelm the benefits of having them physically. So, yeah, we may not say useless, but uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's so, the, the difference is so much. The difference is so clear. Why would you want to have, unless of course you are not looking at growth, you are not looking at scalability, you are not looking at. Uh, yeah, the reason, the reason why I'm asking this is, um, you know, sometimes ago when I was just trying to read about Linux and other things like that. So I learned about the type one and two of, uh, you know, so that is exactly what really bring me into that question. Hmm. Yeah. Type one and type two what? Hypervisor? Uh, hypervisor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so let's learn them and then if you now decide to use them in the physical server, it's okay. Yeah, but, I can. Yes. Of course, with Kubernetes, you can decide to have a physical server because you can literally create your own cloud with Kubernetes. So it just depends on the goal. But if you are looking at being hired, if you are looking for a job, then you want to go in the direction of your employers. You want to go where they are going. They are the head. They are just trailing their path. So no more than the employer with uh, Apple just getting three trillion. <laughs> dollars today as uh, the biggest IT to cloud remains the the way to go. Otherwise, you don't be hearing that people are making trillions of dollars and then because of the limitations of your physical infrastructure, you cannot even make a million dollars. You don't want to come, you cannot compete in this modern world against people in cloud with physical server. Even if you are a millionaire, even if you are, if you are uh, Elon Musk, it costs you so much. So why spend all of that money when you can put it directly in improving your core service? Why spend money on infrastructure when the infrastructure is all about the All right. Yeah, I have another question. All right, why? Um, so talking about AWS, um, when we learn the, the cloud training, are we gonna, is there a certification from AWS that we're gonna get at the end of the training? Yes. Um, okay. That's How AWS can... Certified Solutions Architect. So okay. the training, the training covers that curriculum and teaches you to, uh, let me just say the training covers the curriculum for AWS certification. However, you need to do extra work by practice of dumps to be able to pass the certification. But as far as the interviews and technical questions relating to that course is concerned, the training covers everything. Okay. Or you so cannot just we, finish the training and go for certification without practicing dumps. Dumps. Mm -hmm. Okay. So AWS Solution Architect, that's the that's what the training covers. Yes, associate level. Can we relate AWS to Azure to pass Azure certification as well? Because I know Azure is and no, the focus of this training. I'm I'm an AWS expert, so my focus is on uh, AWS. Yeah, I, yeah. You may want to do Azure outside of this class, which is recommended or which is not a bad suggestion, but I cannot teach you Azure. I'll focus on AWS. Okay. And then, of course, with your infrastructure as code, Terraform, you can deploy. That's one big advantage of Terraform. You can use Terraform to deploy anywhere. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can deploy to AWS, to Azure, to Google Cloud, and even to the private cloud. These are commercial clouds. Even Oracle, IBM can deploy to any of those with Terraform. So, yeah, so um, I, I'm just curious, if we, after learning all of this cloud training and become a cloud engineer. Hmm. Education, Are you AW, AW, huh? Yeah, we lost you for a while. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I said after learning all of this training and we have to learn DOM to pass the uh, AW. Uh, you know, to have like some AWS certifications on our belt. I didn't hear you when you mentioned DOM, so we lost you again. So I, ah, man, I don't know. Um, okay, so my question is, if we are trained in, in this cloud to become a cloud engineer and we go for interviews, um, they would expect us to have a lot of um, cloud certifications, like, um, because if if you've been through all of the cloud training and you should have a popular um, cloud platform like AWS, you should have some of their certifications. So we have to learn DOM extra to be able to pass that certification to have that on our resume when we go for interviews. You said they expect you to have lots of certification. Yeah, I mean, and I mean certifications relating to cloud. The AWS certified 
cloud architect associate level will do. Okay. Just that certification will do. Just that certification, okay. And you do assist us to pass that exam before we start applying for jobs. You are getting the training. Do you know that you need assistance for job? You need assistance for interview? What's the training for then? The training is opening doors to all of that. Don't worry. Okay. I'm getting the training. The training with training, you don't need so much assistance unless you are not understanding what the training is covering. You are not following class. Right. Well, if you didn't have the training and then you are saying assist me with this, assist me with that, it's a different. But training is with training, you don't need so much assistance anymore. So you're able to defend yourself. Yeah. What is dumb? What is that? Well, sample questions. Sample questions, like a shit check. Oh, sample, yeah. Oh, or maybe like past questions, something like similar question. Hmm? Oh, okay. I was I was thinking you're referring to like a kind of tool that we have to learn. Okay. No, just uh, sample questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. By the time you you deal with uh, four hundred sample questions, it is likely, very likely, that uh, out of those four hundred, your seventy five questions will come out from you. You are, you are used to. The kind of questions, the tempo, the timing. So it's more like being in the exam mode. Right. Okay. All right. Where are these other people? Where are the ladies sir. now? Where are CDM people? You are not asking questions, so. Yes, sir. <laughs> so not you, are your daily. Let's. What are these? Uh, what are these, my friends? What are what's their CDM, yeah. Uh, Zuri. Um, you are not asking yeah. questions. And oh. then uh, uh, Funke. Is Funke here? Many people are with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm here, sir. Oh, yeah. Talk now. You are not hearing. Where is, uh, where is uh, CDM? Let's take a question from CDM people now because. <coughs> so, CDM training proper will start Saturday. Saturday, and then uh, where is uh, Saturday, 6 p.m. So, but before then, I just needed to just make sure that uh, we're all on the same page. So ask your questions. Let's give I'm them here, Professor, but I have COVID, so I don't, I can't show my face right now. So I'm not asking too many questions. Okay, I'm sorry. no problem. <laughs> Got you, Kima. But do you have questions at all? No, this <coughs> is Funke. Okay. Yes, Funke. Mm. Yeah, can you hear me, sir? Mm -hmm. Can everybody see me? Uh, okay, yes. Yes. I see you, Funke. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, all I know is um, this has been, you know, coming to the world of clinical research or data manager has been a dream for me because I had a background in, in medical field and um, I had to, you know, drop off. It wasn't because I was failing. I just felt nothing was not for me. And because I wasn't really, I didn't have the broad understanding that as a, as a um, um, like having a bachelor's degree in nursing can take you to places like you don't have to be working with patient one on one. So I had gave up before I have gave up and changed my career before, you know, I was exposed to a lot of things that I can do. And, you know, I wanted to do clinical research analyst for a long time, but, you know, it's not something that you can just do, especially in this country. I believe you have to really talk, you know, know people that can really train you because I'm a kind of person like, I don't like to go to a job, even though I have the opportunity to get in and not know what I'm doing, you know, the basic knowledge of it. And I've been doing my research before I came <laughs> to your um, website and, um, I'm really excited about taking this um, clinical data manager classes class. And uh, I believe that it's gonna take me places with your support and training 
and I'm excited. So that's basically it. And now um, I've read a lot about it, the job opportunities, what I can do with this career, and how where it can take me. And um, um, I think that's basically it. And I'm excited. So that's it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Good to know. Good to know you've done a lot of research on your own. Awesome. awesome. Ibrahim, uh, if I in DT, if I, yeah. what, what's your course? Clinical data management. Okay. Mm. Okay. Do you have any questions? Actually, right? actually, before now, I've been doing my research also. Okay. All you have said, all you have said here is in tandem with what I have been researching. And I believe, uh, with your support and uh, if getting the training pro properly from you, I think uh, it will be great. You're ready to go. Okay, that's fine. Thank, thank you. All right. Ibrahim, oh, should professor. Yeah. Hi, hi, Professor. If I can interject. So, All Infai, right, Kima. is that your name? And Fai, the, the lady that was just talking? Uh, the no, lady was. Okay. 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 So, I just wanted to like. Uh, piggyback off what you said because me I am a registered nurse so I don't know how far you got into you know based on my research I saw like wow you know I don't know how far you got into the program but it definitely helped so even if you still like have your books and stuff um, it's it's great resources based on what I also researched for CDM um, it definitely helps you understand the whole entire picture much easier I yeah, just wanted to like so kind of add that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And um, you know, um, I really know, you know, one thing about me is that when it comes to medical line, I like to do a lot of research and um I'm so grateful that I was exposed to Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. because I worked with them for a while because what I do is when I when I you know when I stop doing my med my nursing um, classes um you know i i was up i have the opportunity to work with doctors and nurses training them for epic i know you oh, know something. yeah i know so, epic okay yeah i do epic so i train doctors i do my specialty i do the primary um epic for doctors mm -hmm. like the primary one and um um also I also do baking, like wow. the hematology and oncology. So, you know, it, one thing about me is that I have a knowledge of medical field a lot. It's just that, you know, <laughs> you've got to get it to get to do anything. And yeah. I have a background as a certified nurse assistant. I was working with Memorial Amman Hospital downtown before I got into my nursing school. I have my L, um, my I should show a degree in health science. And okay. um, yeah, I was in nursing school for a year, you know, my two years to get my bachelor's degree. I have my pharmacology, you know, some other classes I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and that was when I stopped doing it because I'm like, no, nah, I don't think this is for me because the pressure of one on one with a patient bedside nursing is too much you know and as at that time as at that time I, I I didn't have the opportunity to meet people to tell me oh there's a you know it's very broad and now I'm sorry to say this I made good money but I can't I don't see myself going you know study nursing it's a lot of commitment and all that and I don't see myself going back to that would I rather use that time to learn more and make more money and have yeah. a good career because clinical data manager, clinical research analyst, it's a good career, you know, and it's still the same world we live in. It deals with protocol procedures, you know, things, you know, things done in the nursing world, you know, and pretty Absolutely. much study people. So I think I'll be good. So because I don't see myself, I'd rather take my time to go for my master's to support my career in whatever I'm doing. Because, you know, and I think I should be good, but thank you so much for your hard advice. No, thank you too. Yeah, great, great um, experience you have. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, wow. <coughs> All right, thank you, ladies. Yes. Uh, Hello? Yeah. Yeah, who is, who is next? Uh, this is Brian. Brian All right, Brian. Okay, so, so I'm currently studying cloud production by myself. And um, I want to know. What are you studying by yourself? I'm a cloud practitioner. Cloud practitioner, okay. Yeah, I got um, I got some courses on Udemy, and I'm studying by myself. So, are you saying like um, without cloud practitioner, I can apply with station architecture, right? Yes, sir. Nah. You can. Okay. And that thing is um, what do you think about certified advanced networking? Certified what? Advanced networking. Uh, well, it's another arm of IT. So where do you want to go? I mean, um, because um, I, I basically want to deal with as a networking, right, in cloud is what I want to do, basically. I'm not that good with um, as in coding and all. So, but um, according to what I saw online, it's, it's cloud practitioner, social architectures, DevOps, and then um, satisfied advanced networking. So mm -hmm. is the, okay, according to what I saw online, there's um, a cloud practitioner first one, social architecture second one, uh, DevOps, and then um, certified advanced networking in that order. So online in my course or where? No, just uh, like um, uh, for my research. Well, everything, the first three makes sense to me, but I don't know where your advanced network is coming from. Oh. So it's not in line with those other three. It's, it's on its own, it's good on its own, but it's, it does not fit in it fit into the it. cloud environment. You want to do networking, then learn networking cloud and do network specialty. There are certain network certification within cloud. Within because cloud. everything we'll be saying is cloud is the place to focus. So why do you want to go and get certificate outside of cloud? cloud. I want to develop yeah, then, cloud. So yeah, then, then it should be cloud. Yeah. Advanced networking outside cloud is not the same thing as network. networking is cloud. So the way to start in cloud is to do something like solutions architect and then build on that to the professional level and then build on that to the specialty level. Okay. Thank you. If you already had all of this like seven years ago, and you are just coming to cloud, it's a different thing. But since you don't have it yet, they don't go the route of somebody who, who started seven years ago. It's a different thing now. Okay. Mm. So when is it um, and the class for cloud study? Sorry? Class when is it study for cloud? We started now. This is our first lecture. Oh, okay. This is our first lecture. Okay. But we are just deliberately making this lecture. We are just taking it easy and making one, everyone feel at home so that uh, as much as possible, we can get everyone settled enough to look up to the technical class. So we started, yeah, June, okay. uh, January 4th. Okay, thank we you. advertising today, so finally we're here. Okay. All right, uh, Hamed, you want to say something? You are muted, I guess. I mean, you are muted. <clears throat> okay, so we're not hearing it. So any, any other contribution? And then people from the previous class, people from uh, uh, existing classes, so we don't want to have many classes running. We want to have- Can you hear me now? Run. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, yes, I mean. Okay, uh, I'm for the CDN. Okay. So I had the other two ladies discussing about the ex uh, sector part. So I'm a little bit confused because I don't have a basic knowledge in health. Yeah, I knew uh, that was going to, to, to confuse some people. Exactly. Don't worry about it, yeah. So I just want to be sure because I read about it and it's all about like more of the IT part, you know, inputting the data correctly, trying to look at <clears throat> all those stops. Yeah, so they just happen to have those advantages. So it's not like a prerequisite. Uh, 
necessary to be successful. Don't be scared, brother. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not scared. Basically, no, I, I mean, I just want to be sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, no, the, be sure. Yeah. It's just, the, so nothing to be worried about. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Nothing at all to be worried about. Yes, yes, sir. Um, yeah. yeah, I quickly want to ask this question and regards the AW, you said you'll be dwelling so much on the AWS. So I just want to know, are, are you still going to be doing some on other web servers like Microsoft and the Google as well? No, no. Okay. At all. Capital letter, no. It's purely AWS. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when we do things like this, we choose the platform we want to run and then we stick with that. I cannot do a bit here and then we do another bit there. No, it will not be consistent. So I've chosen AWS because it's the biggest market. And then uh, there are more opportunities, employment opportunities with AWS, at least in the US. But uh, outside of AWS, if you feel like studying any other cloud, then it should be really easy because you already know how to use cloud in the perspective of AWS. So learning one or two other, learning Google, for example, and you know, you shouldn't, it should only be a couple of days to learn the basics. But you have to make up your mind, where do you want to be expert in? AWS, I cannot deviate since we, I'm, I'm in the class, so I'm just asking, since yeah. I know he's part of the web server, so I just want to know if we're going to be doing on the three of them. No, it's really, it's really hard, but especially at the advanced level, it's really hard to, to jump from one to one. Yeah, if you want to know them on the surface level, yeah, but when you really get advanced, it's no longer, it becomes really difficult to jump from one to one. Because you cannot even know one cloud in full. We don't even have enough time and resources to be jumping from one to the other. Anyway, to answer your question, yes, you will purely AWS. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So people from previous class, from last year class, trying to, people like Ulu, Shola, or Montreal. So the idea is that, uh, Mr. Montreal. Hello, sir. Yeah, so what, uh, what are you doing in your current class? Or what have you just completed? Okay, we are now, <clears throat> we are AWS and then we are treating an IP address, private IP address, public IP oh, address. Then that's the last topic. Oh, and okay, that's that... the topic we did in December. Oh, okay. Okay, somebody was talking about networking now. We wanted to be networking certified. So AWS has that. You can hear somebody talking about it in AWS. So you'd rather be a networking expert within cloud. It's more, yeah, okay. So that's the last topic. So, what you do after that is uh, so the idea, the reason you are joining this class is to see how we can uh, how we can maintain just one class and move you. I mean, uh, instead of running multiple classes concurrently, move you from there to continue after AWS, it will be DevOps, right? To continue yeah. DevOps here in this central class. That's the idea. Okay, so uh, when are we rounding up the AWS class before we move to DevOps? Uh, the way you sounded now, so you, you're already on the last topic. You are doing the uh, VPC. Uh, so yeah, maybe one, doing, uh, one, two more topics, one, two more, one or two more classes will be done with AWS. Okay, before we now move to DevOps. Yes, after AWS, we move to DevOps. Mm, okay, okay. So, so what uh, was please... likely to happen is, after AWS, your trainer would close that class and then move you to this class, to my class. DevOps. Then when, when we are class, is it Friday and Saturday too? Uh, let me share that with you on the, on the forum. I don't have access to my Excel sheet. Okay. But the whole idea, the reason you are here is to stay, let you know that you cannot have those classes like that. So anymore. So we are likely to want to merge all of them into one big class. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we just give you enough time to complete your 
current uh, AWS, and then you join me for DevOps. Joining me for DevOps may mean that you have to repeat some part of AWS, unless you just want to take a break and say, okay, when you're in uh, DevOps, call me. Otherwise, I don't mind you joining to revise AWS and then just move on to DevOps. At the end of the day. Yeah, I think it's better. No knowledge is wasted. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, it's the think... same thing for who else is here from your class, for anybody from, I mean, for everybody from that class. Every. Who else is here? Who, who do I know again? Uh, Olami, Moka, <coughs> Lucky Not exactly the same for Lucky Ayo, but uh, I'm sure he understands. Uh, who else is here? So, hello, Mr. King. Yeah. So, this Friday, we'll still continue with the Mr. Raymond. Yes. This Friday and Saturday. <coughs> yes, I'll just, he will have enough time to finish your. Your current topic, but well, he's not starting okay. a new topic. With you. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, because we have a lot of questions to ask in our submitting and the uh, IP address. So. Yes, yes, that that is a very, a very tricky topic. Yeah, so because the more questions <laughs> you ask, yeah, the better. Because like can... what uh, Mr. Raymond said, for you, for us to design and develop a uh, VPC virtual mm. private cloud. You need to have mm. a, de a depth understanding of uh, subnetting, uh, the assigning IP that's address. That's, uh, so that's where we are now. Have uh, questions on around that area of your interview, of whatever interview. Uh -huh. uh, they are not likely to ask you how do you create EC2, how do you know, but they will ask you questions mm. around because it's tricky. Yeah. And for you to say, yeah. you know, cloud, that is the way to, to shake you to find out whether you really know cloud okay. understanding of VPC. So yes, ask as many questions as okay. you want to help you understand that. Okay. So as it is now, invariably, when when are we going to final, finally and finally close all the classes from uh, Terraform to Kubernetes? No, your class is, does, does not include Kubernetes. So you didn't join us. This is a modern class now. What you have uh, Mr. Omoshon. Sir? In your time, we're not doing Kubernetes, we're not doing Terraform. So your, your class will stop at DevOps, right? Ah, uh, okay. Yes, now. Uh, <laughs> uh, because the, 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 we are looking at the six figure because you said Terraform and Kubernetes. Uh, let's discuss that more... outside here. But your class, costs, okay. the, the class will register for stop at DevOps. DevOps, okay. Uh, okay. You know how much people are paying now? Oh, by the way, is that guy here, the guy who paid all the money at once? What's, uh, yeah. Are you here? Where are you? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. No, not oh. Zulu. Oh, okay. Zulu, we, ch we change your... Yes, yeah. I'm here. You know yourself, right? Yes, I'm here. I did that, Mola, is that you? Yes, but that's not my name. <laughs> I'm using the uh, my web and Zoom account. Sorry about that. Okay, so what's your name? Gani you Owoni Koko. Okay, Koko, yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, so I know all of this is elementary for you. So we'll start the real deal when oh, you are ready. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's fine. Okay, so please ask questions. Yeah, because next time we are just going straight to technicals. We are starting the real course next time. Okay, so ask me, your preliminary question. Okay, another question that I look funny is that uh, with if we end in DBox, can one get user to get a job? Yes, now. Okay. All the people that uh, that were there before you, they, they stopped at DBox and they got jobs. Okay, okay. Yeah. But when they are the, going to structure the interview question, is it going to cover Terraform and uh, Kubernetes? Mm -hmm. No, not likely Kubernetes. Kubernetes is just yep. because I want to show you, I want to show them that uh, my trainees mm -hmm. are different. Kubernetes oh, okay. is extra. Extra. For Terraform, yeah, Terraform, yes, you do need Terraform to pass. For a CC oh, okay. job of 140, you need Terraform. Nobody will pay you 140 without your, without, without automation. Uh, automation. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So which means when we finish DevOps, we need to take a step further for Terraform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, highly recommended. If I'm if if we didn't have it and it was not part of the curriculum, okay, fine. But since we have it, then you may as well take advantage. Okay. Or well, once they find out that you know automation, the interview is going to focus on automation. And that's that's really what's what's out there now. The DevOps role is just, I mean, I've had a couple of interviews on your behalf, so I know what they are looking for. Yes, questions. Yeah, I I'm kind of, of of opinion like I understand that um, there are a lot of people in this class that have started before us. So I don't know, you know, we maybe there is a way we can be grouped like separately so that we're gonna know those are that are just starting now. I don't I don't know because I'm just I'm lost. Some some knows. You know, I don't know why it's why it's your business, why it should be lost. You paid for training. <laughs> I'm lost. You don't you don't determine who else to be in class. No, <laughs> sir. No, sir. No, I'm not determining it. Like <laughs> don't so, worry about it. Everybody, I mean, you are starting from scratch. Okay. They should be the uh, one to bring that. Why are you mixing up with this small small boy that I just started? Don't you worry? <laughs> <laughs> They should be the ones worrying that ah, we've gone so far. <laughs> so nothing to worry about at all. Unless we start class and then we are starting from the middle, we are taking you and then you, ah, that was not what you told us. You told us to start from scratch. <laughs> but as long as we are not starting from middle, we are starting from scratch and we are carrying everybody along. Okay. It should not be a problem. And by the way, I have another project that I'm starting shortly and that will be free training uh, free training basically so the old program in the old program we used to start with windows we teach you windows before we teach you linux but i have realized that we have uh, <clears throat> we dwelt too much even though that is important we dwell too much on things that employers do not need to pay you six figure. They do not need your understanding of Windows to pay you 140. So what we have, the changes we have made is to focus more on the technical skills that employer require of you. Instead of teaching you the good ones, but they don't necessarily need. So we are dropping Windows. So that we can have, even the Linux that was almighty Linux. We just want to study now only the part of Linux that is relevant to your infrastructure as tool. I don't know if you get what I mean. So we have, we have modified the curriculum to fit 140k job rather than do what we like, but ultimately may not necessarily give you that okay. job. However, because you still need those Windows skills to understand the real team, I'll be giving the Windows keys and other skills that are not necessarily part of the interview outside class as part of my free training. So that even people who are not into IT at work can come to that class and just pick a bit here, a bit there, and do something for themselves. So you also can take advantage of that free class to learn elementary things and basic things that will help you understand the real things. The real things for 140K job is not for everybody. It's only for people who have paid. Eh? It's expensive. This course is not cheap. This course is not cheap, you know. So well done. People that are able to afford my service to be here. Uh, I'm not sure one may not know, but this course is $4,500. So everyone who is here deserves the best. And I cannot collect 4,500 from one person and give story at the end of the day that you must get job now. You must get mm. job. Cannot pay that kind of money and not get job. Thank you, sir. Mm. And may I pray so? Yes, you get job. Unless you are not learning. If you are not learning and you are not understanding, then you can opt out. But well, as long as you follow me from beginning to the end and you assimilate 70%, 80% of what I'm teaching, you will get job. You will get job whatever it takes, all right? However, the little, little things that you need to 
to consolidate your understanding of this concept, I'll be giving in the free training class. All right, not the real thing. The real thing is not free because you are paying so much for it already. But the little, little things that you need to, oh, okay, this is what, you know, so that at interview, you know, there was somebody who, there are many cases, not even somebody. The, there was this particular case of somebody who, a trainee who did not even do DevOps with me. He, he didn't even do it. He didn't do it over here. He didn't do it over here. He stopped at Linux. And his understanding of Linux was so good at interview that he was hired as a DevOps person. And the company now is, is actually an elderly person, almost like my age. And the company now taught him uh, cloud using uh, Microsoft. So the company is a consultant to Microsoft. So they use Microsoft Azure. So even though he, was, he did not apply for a Azure job, or he was not even a cloud person, but he had a very good understanding of this whole concept of IT. And he was hired and given a better job than he was looking for. So the kind of understanding that will give you that kind of solid foundation that people will say, wow, your understanding is good. Based on this, I'll hire you. That is what I'll be giving in the free training. So I'll advertise that to you so that you can also come and be part of that free training outside these tick tick courses that we When is the free training? Uh, it will be bagging. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, yes. Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. In the morning? Mm -hmm. Ah, we have to work. But can we get the video? Yes, you can recording? get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that, that 9 a.m. I will be at work. Yeah. How many hours? So, Three hours? He... No, no, not three hours. That would be stressing. It's free, so I can decide to do one. I can decide to do 30 minutes. I'm not with anybody. Well, your own regular class that you paid for will be three hours. Uh, three hours, yeah. <clears throat> three hours for cloud, two hours for CDM. CDM is much, much simpler. So two hours CDM. CDM. Mm -hmm. Then you could determine it. Okay, okay. Cost for the ladies. Where is a? Uh, but excuse me, sir. Now, nah, Bulu, let's uh, let's uh, let's <coughs> let's incorporate other people. We are taking over the class. You and I. Let other people join. No, they, they are free to Now, nah, Bulungu. Now, nah, Bulungu. <laughs> now, nah, Bulungu, are you here? And then uh, the where is the LA lady? Hmm. Uh, Alexandra, okay, Alexandra is here. Alexandra, you're not talking. You're not hearing us. All right, so contributions from Johnson. Contributions from other people, so we don't just restrict the class to just two of us. I hope you are, you are still hearing me. Am I freezing? So yeah. we can hear you say something. Adric. I'm hearing you. Okay. I'm hearing Adric. you. Adric. Ivory, right? Adric. Adric. Yes, yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Adric. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um, if you would, um, you made a comment earlier uh, that I, I didn't get to catch all of it, but in, you said in interviews, you must be able to defend. And you started off by saying, I am able to build infrastructure with Terraform. I am able to deploy. And that's where I lost you after that. Could you complete oh, okay. that for me? Uh, yes, I, I, I complete that. But that is for cloud people, not for CDM people. Oh, okay. For CDM people, I'm going to share with you what you, yeah, what you, what you, be able to, what you should be able to defend. But in any case, if you want to have that as for just for record, I'll still complete that. So yes. what you are taking to the interview as a cloud person is I'm able to build infrastructure as with uh, I'm able to deploy use code Terraform specifically to build infrastructure in cloud. I'm able to use to deploy applications on those infrastructure with Ansible. 
and I'm able to set up CICD for yes. that application with Jenkins. Thank you, sir. Yes. So the Jenkins, the Terraform, and uh, Ansible, they are tools. They are tools. <coughs> and there are over 15 tools that we will learn as part of that cloud, the things that we use here and there to build that simple statement, to, to build that. And then these are the things that impress, uh, that impress interviewer. Part of the interviews that I had on your behalf was supposed to last for 15 to 30 minutes. Mm. 15 to 30 minutes deep. Not the real one, like the second stage. And then in seven minutes, the interview was done. Uh, what's the problem? Is that all? You know why? Because the understanding of the concept, when they ask questions, it's not like you are, you are, you are, you are giving them answers like you read them from book. The way you answer just shows that you know this thing. You know, what's the use wasting time? 30 minutes interview lasted only seven minutes. What is this? What is it? What do you use for this? Just back, 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 and you are done. So definitely. In fact, there was another interview that even before the real interview, it was already like you have this job and they were already sending in. But of course, I'm not looking for a job. I hope you know that. All of that was on your behalf. So the point I'm making is uh, you, you, should so, you should understand these concepts again so well that when you explain, it's, there's no ambiguity. It just shows that you understand what you are talking about. Right. That is it. And then, of course, more important, at the advanced stage, you need to be able to show something that, yes, I understand all of the concepts, but look at what I have been. There should be something that you can show. And that is why in the case of cloud, we're going to the projects that will be building in class, you, you, you save them so that you can. But in your own case, which is much simpler, yes, we will just, uh, we have plenty of materials, interviews. Yeah, it's more of a, CDMA is more of talk, 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 talk. Okay. It's not like cloud where they really expect you to show that you have done stuff. This one is just talk. And if it's one of the clinical trial, uh, what happens? Okay, the project that uh, you are currently involved in, uh, Funke was mentioning something about uh, those terms that he used. What kind of project was it? Mention one of those terms. Okay, what exactly did you do? Uh, I did this, I did this, I did none of this. So it's really, really simple, you see. Okay. And the jobs are there. The jobs are there. The jobs are yes, just sir. waiting. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. Um, yeah. Mike, I was looking on YouTube and I was learning about the CDF of the data, the data manager needs to collect to get their protocols, you know, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and you have to work with um, like two people, Bows Tactics and one other person, I can't remember right now, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even supposed to know all of that. Yeah, the training with each other, no problem. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm just getting prepared. Yeah, just shows that you'll be doing research like you said. Yeah, we tell you all the different departments and the other stakeholders that you're working with from the PI to all of the different units. And then when there is a alarm and you need to raise a query, the person that will see the that would uh, clear it and let you, yeah we'll talk about all of them and then build that vocabulary from there and that is what you take to your interview all right so this is 747 right we've done barely two hours Maybe hello mr k time. don't no we have to honor oh, uh, Hello, Mr. Key. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see on. <laughs> Concerning okay. uh, this uh, clinical data manager, I don't have any background in the health sector and I don't want to start cracking my brain on that. I want to focus on networking, lineage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. You already, that's, you know, everybody chooses where he wants to go. So you have picked your okay. own direction. So stick with cloud. Okay. It's not for everybody. 
You choose your own. Oh, cool. People for data. Anyone for data analytics here, by the way? Data analytics. You know, we talked about one of my courses being data analytics. Anybody for that? Nobody? Okay. That's actually a Nigerian course, so I do not, I did not expect to see anyone. And Timmy, are you here? Auntie, data analysis coordinator, are you here? Okay. All right, so let's take more questions. So if I want to start the technical team now, I'll be confusing. I don't even know which one to start. So I'm not taking anything technical. If I start with cloud, which is my favorite, the CDM people will just be like, wow, what is this? This is all already started. If I start with CDM, so we're going to separate the classes. Everybody will be there. But let's take general questions right now. Um, sir, um, yeah. when is the time and date for these classes? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, these classes will be, when is the time and date? 6 p.m. Uh, when is the plan? Raymond, when is this class? I don't have the timetable, right? I'm going for the cloud engineering. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to that, actually. The cloud. Yeah, cloud. I think it's Mondays and Wednesdays, 6 p.m. The cloud is... Uh, good evening, everyone. Good, good evening, evening, Mr. Raymond. Yeah. For the cloud, it's Mondays and Wednesdays, <coughs> 6 p.m. Okay. Mondays, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. And six then for six yeah, to nine. Six to nine. Yeah. Yes, six to nine. Central time. time. Central time. Then uh, for CDM, it's uh, six to nine, six to eight, Saturdays and Sundays. And I would have two, preferred two days. Out. I would have preferred the, the cloud over Saturday or Sunday. I'm telling you, bro. Uh, <laughs> telling you, bro. Seriously. Uh, Please, is there anything you can do for us, sir? For the yeah. cloud? Saturdays are going to be perfect. Yeah, Saturdays are going to be perfect. Please, sir, Mr. King. Yes, please, 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 please. Please, please. Mr. King. No, because I already have a class for Saturday at Sunday. Unless, oh, unless you want me to assign a different trainer to you. I like to take the class myself, so. The, oh. the other option is... Uh, one, two. Hmm? Yeah, Tafik. Tafik, what did you register for? Tafik, you are muted. Sir? Are you for cloud or for CDN? For cloud, sir. Okay. Well, you can you can make it 6 p.m. Mondays not, and that, not, not that I can't make it, but I'll prefer Saudi and Sunday. Uh, if you can make it, let's start, man. Let's start. <laughs> Once we start, and then we'll see how it goes then. Uh, well, hello, Mr. Your, your course is four months. The other yeah. one is two months. So let's see. I just I just can. I just finished with uh, Mr. Obafemi. I don't know if you can if you can remember me. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I don't remember you. Oh. Traffic. Oh, you, rem you remember me? I'll mess. I'll mess. Uh, you. You <laughs> okay, okay. You remember me, sir? The uh, window and the Linux. Window. And Did you trouble me? Why? Why should I remember you? Did you? Were you overpriced? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'll see, I, uh, you, I, I, call, I called you several times. Very uh, it's only, only I, will, I, call, I first message you, sir. Where can I call you, sir? You said now. Call me now. Okay. Ten minutes now. Ten minutes. Okay. 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 Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with uh, this, and then of course, once we have a slot for weekend, then we can move. Yeah. Um. So yeah, because uh, Wednesday, I mean, I'm okay with Mondays, six p.m. Mm -hmm. six p.m. to nine p.m. But 
Wednesday is a little tricky for me because I have to pick up my daughter at five and I have to be with her till my mom gets home from work. So I don't know how I can do with, deal with that, man. I'm just thinking about that right now. That's, that Wednesday is going to be really hard. I mean, I can try with my daughter, but it's going to be okay, really hard. Okay, so do you, uh, do you want us to uh, cloud people? Weekend is not available right now. Do you want us to move our classes to Tuesdays and Thursdays instead? I would prefer Monday and Thursday. Monday oh. and Thursday, if it's possible. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I mean, people. We all have re uh, preferences, but I mean, mm -hmm. we. I, I don't really know what to say, but everybody has their own preference. Um, but. Oh, I'm just speaking for myself. Yeah, let's yeah. hear your preference yeah. for <laughs> cloud. Uh, Could we move uh, to Mondays and Thursdays? I was just about to suggest even weekend in the morning will be good. Like nah. in the morning. Nah, morning now. Even if it is better. You know. The clinical are already taken the evening, so mm -hmm. I just suggest um, so suggestion if in the morning, Saturday and Sunday in the morning. Yeah, it will be it will be it will tell on me. You know, get one class to suffer if if I don't if I'm taking two classes. Same day. Same day. What will I be doing during Tuesday and Thursday? What about Tuesday and Thursday for you? Are you doing any? Tuesday and Thursday, you can't manage with that. No, it's cool with me, but I'm just trying to, mm -hmm. you know, for others that are not, but I think no time. Yeah, that's that's how I try to adjust. Otherwise, it was Mondays and uh, Wednesdays. So adjusting to Mondays and Thursday instead of Monday and Wednesday, does it would it have any adverse effect on anyone here or cloud? No. No, apparently no. Okay, so because of white, we are moving to Mondays. What did we say? Mondays and Thursdays, right? Mondays and Thursdays. Yes, sir. Instead of yes, Mondays sir. and Wednesdays. All right, yes, so sir. that's fine. Nobody. Thank you, everyone. Uh, All right, hello, sir. Mr. Somebody Mr. is contradicting hello. that. Okay. Mr. King. Yeah. Uh, because I. Uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm unable to understand what's going on now. The class with Mr. Raymond, we still mm -hmm. have a fr Saturday and a Friday and Saturday. Okay. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Olu. Uh -huh. Because this new see, we cloud are done, class... See, we are done with the AWS. And then we still have a... So, uh, we know we are, we are the last discussion in the class was we are going, we are going to look at the topology of uh, VPC, subnetting, IP address, and all that. You know, that's where we stopped in December. Yes, we, we, are, meeting on, we are meeting on Fridays. This Friday, Friday and, yes, this Friday and Saturday. And Saturday. Okay, yeah. okay. So how I many we have? How many class now to cover up the? the and you discuss that in your own class, man. Uh, okay, that's that okay. Now. Okay, uh, Mr. King, so sorry. So my class, our class is different from the one you are discussing with the Monday and Wednesday. On the correct, sir. Monday, Monday, Thursday. This is for the, the new set starting the month of January. New set. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. because I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I'm, I don't understand. When they are saying Monday, Thursday, I said, we are already on Friday, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to get it better. Uh, it's better to ask questions than to just follow mm -hmm. and you don't know where they are going. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we are with Starimon, we are <coughs> no good. problem. Okay, so uh, like that's it for now. So how many... And then we'll have, how many are we here? Three. Hmm? Okay, 23 altogether. I've mm -hmm. not seen money for 23 people. Anyway, so 
If there are no more questions, everything is sorted now. So we are ready to start class. So we are not holding class tomorrow, right? Because today is Tuesday. So next no, class will be Thursday. Okay. Not tomorrow, Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday, 6 p.m. We have our first class, technical class. On, uh, and then we're starting with Linux. And then weekend, Saturday, 6 p.m., we're having the first CDMA CDM. class. CDM. CDM class. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Any more questions? No more questions. All right, so no need to waste your time. We've done two hours today. At least we have launched the training. And then we'll build on this subsequent. All right. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All Thank right you. then. Bye everyone. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Bye. you're welcome. Good night, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Good night. 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 Good night.